What's going on, everybody? Welcome into Vikings Now. I'm your host for today's show, Patrick Seatman. And we got some big time rumors and news to discuss around the Minnesota Vikings. Firstly, we're going to be starting off with Dalvin Cook as a report came out from Darren Wolfson that he may be open to taking a pay cut to stay with the Minnesota Vikings next season. Obviously, it was firstly reported that Dalvin had no intention to take a pay cut. It's looking like his mind may be changing. Then also, we're going to be talking about DeAndre Hopkins because in shocking NFL news fashion, he was cut by the Arizona Cardinals. Can we see if he will be a good fit for the Minnesota Vikings? But first, an updated look on our sub battle this week with our Lions Talk channel here at Chat Sports. We're up to 146 subs this week. They're at 157. We're close to catching them. Let's see if we can take the lead by Sunday. If you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It's a quick, easy way to help us out here on Vikings. Now, anyways, let's get into the latest around Dalvin Cook. Because I was shocked when we got this report from Darren Wolfson that he said that the Vikings or that Dalvin Cook could be open to taking a pay cut to stay with the Vikings for next season. This is what Darren had to say. He said, somebody in the know, somebody I trust even enough who suggested checking on the possibility that Cook is having a change of heart on taking a pay cut to stay with the Vikings. And it's possible. You look at the landscape of the league, like who really needs a running back? You look at Austin Eckler. He reworked his deal to remain a charger. Could something comparable happen where the possibility exists that Dalvin Cook is in purple in 2023. It's something I need to dig a little bit deeper on, but the possibility exists that Cook will rework his deal and take some sort of a cut, realize that there really isn't any other opportunity out there. And we're talking about the cap savings for the Vikings. If they were going to cut him, they would save $7 million if it was a post-June 1st cut, which makes the kind of the most sense from the Viking standpoint of things. You get to open up cap space with that. But I do think the main point with Dalvin here, I think he realized that his market is extremely thin. You know, if you look around teams in the NFL, like who really needs a true running back? You know, you think about the teams like the Bills, the Bengals, if they move off Mixon. You know, we always heard about the Dolphins being connected to Dalvin Cook. But some of these teams, like you just look at it, you're like, we could just go draft the running back. Like why would we want to take on Dalvin's $11 million cap hit to the running back position when we really haven't seen the bang for the buck come from that Dalvin Cook contract. But I actually got five reasons why I do think Dalvin Cook should consider staying. And the number one reason, he is comfortable with Minnesota. He's been there his entire NFL career. And I think Dalvin Cook, he's kind of like that leader in the locker room. He's kind of got that alpha personality with the Minnesota Vikings. He's comfortable in Minnesota. And I just think maybe staying there, keeping around the familiar faces that he's been with this entire NFL career. And plus, this will be his second year in Kevin O'Connell's offense, so I do think that he could get better. But he is a huge big-time leader in this Vikings locker room. You know, we've heard the reports. We've heard the kind of the news clippings from the Minnesota Vikings that Dalvin Cook was a leader, and he was getting very emotional with a bunch of the guys at the end of last season, knowing this could be the end for him in Minnesota. And then also, he's got elite weapons around him. You know, he's got Justin Jefferson. He's got TJ Hawkinson. He's got an okay offensive line. Obviously, the tackles are solidified in Christian Derisaw and Brian O'Neill. I just think Dalvin, if you're going to go to any other offense, it may not be better than what he has here in Minnesota. And I do think, number four, I do think the Vikings run game will be much better this year. Obviously signing Josh Oliver, probably the best run blocking tight end in NFL free agency from the Baltimore Ravens. You re-signed CJ Ham, your fullback. I overall think that this team will, that was 26 in rushing last season, I think they're going to be in the top 20, if not the top 15. And then also it's a prove a year with Dalvin, man. He just got that shoulder surgery. Apparently it's all good. He's been playing with a torn labrum allegedly for the last two seasons. So apparently he's got it fixed. This is going to be a prove it year. Those are five reasons why I think if Dalvin does stay in Minnesota, I think he could be pretty effective. But let me know. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. Will Dalvin be a Viking next season? If you would have asked me this two months ago, I would have said hell no. But Obviously, new reports come out, and it's changing. So YouTube's going to throw you an ad break your way. Sit back, let it play, and go answer today's pinned comment. Like I just said, I was if you would ask me this two months ago, I would have said for sure Dalvin's gone. It just makes too much sense financially. I just think both sides would be a... Uh, well, both sides would have been a winner if they would have moved on from Dalvin Cook. But now I'm leaning towards yes. 
But I will say this. If he is going to stay, it's going to need to be a legit pay cut. This isn't going to be a pay cut where Dalvin goes from $11 million down to like $8 million. I think, honestly, Kwesi, the GM, he's going to want this to be down at that 4 $5 million cap hit, mainly just because we re-signed Alexander Madison this offseason. You're not going to want to pay $20 million a year to a running back position group where you're already paying Kirk Cousins. You're going to have to pay Justin Jefferson. So I do think it would be need to be a legit pay cut. And I love this graphic that we've shown you guys multiple times. This is rushing yards over expected. I honestly just think this does a good job of uh, portraying that Dalvin, he may still be a top 12 running back in the NFL, but we have seen the decline. Rushing yards over expected since 2020, it has gone down. And for the first time in his career, he was in the negative this past season. He was one of the worst starting running backs in the league in terms of this stat, this is the stat is determined or before every run play, there's a certain amount of rushing yards you can get. And Dalvin Cook was in the negative for that. But overall, the stats past four seasons, we have seen the yards per carry go down. I mean, 5.1 from that 2020 season. Where you can honestly have made the argument that Dalvin Cook is one of the best running backs, if not the best running back in the NFL that season. But then 4.7 in 2021. And then this past year in 2022, 4.4 and we have seen the carries dip since 2020 and just the yards as a whole and I think Dalvin is honestly we have seen the I guess the dual threat ability the pass catching ability also with Dalvin Cook kind of take a step back drops were even an issue this past season for Dalvin just his overall play hasn't been the same since that 2020 year but who knows maybe with that shoulder surgery he could get a fix and get back to his old self but I'm curious on this, and I want to. I'm really uh, intri intrigued to see what you guys have to say. A fifth round pick for Dalvin Cook, just a fifth round pick. Would you do it? Would you trade Dalvin Cook for a fifth round pick? Give me a T for trade or give me a P for pass. Overall, though, this Vikings running back group and this room, it's loaded. I mean, you have a ton of names, and normally teams only bring on five running backs to their active 53 man roster, and the Vikings right now have legitimately six guys that I think could all make the roster. Obviously, Dalvin Cook, if he's there, he's going to make it. Madison, he's 100% going to make it. You paid him money this offseason. Kane Wangu, the special teams kind of chess piece that the Vikings have, I'm assuming he's going to make it. Then, obviously, Ty Chandler, I love him. They also have the fullback, C.J. Ham. He's for sure make it. Then Dwayne McBride, who he took out of the seventh round, he is most likely going to make it as well. But one guy I do want to kind of focus in on here in a second is Ty Chandler. I want the Vikings to give Ty Chandler more looks. Our fifth-round rookie out of North Carolina last season, I thought he absolutely popped in his limited reps from um, this past year in preseason. He actually got some reps at the later half of the year. But his college stats are absolutely ridiculous. I mean, he ran for over 3,000 yards starting his career at Tennessee, and then he transferred to North Carolina for his senior year. But 26 total touchdowns, over five yards to carry. Anytime I watch him, he just pops. I'm a big fan of Ty Chandler. Would want to see him get some more carries this upcoming year. And also make this point. Why even draft Dwayne McBride if you knew Dalvin Cook was going to be on the team and you knew he could be possibly be taking a pay cut? That's why I'm still kind of raising my eyebrows at this whole thing. But, I mean, Dwayne McBride, the seventh-round rookie we took out of UAB, I can't wait to watch him play, especially this preseason because, man, if you guys want a fun little uh, highlight reel to go watch on YouTube, go throw on some Dwayne McBride highlights from this past season. I mean, 7.4 yards per carry for him at the running back spot at UAB, 233 carries, 1,700 yards, and 19 whole touchdowns. This guy was an absolute demon. But overall, at the running back position, I want this to be a running back by committee. Committee. I, I mean, when was the last time we've really seen a true workhorse running back besides a Derrick Henry carry a team throughout the NFL playoffs? I just overall, I think the Vikings, they got enough talent in that backfield. I do think it's time for them to go more of running back by committee and split carries for them. These guys, they got fresher legs in the later half of the year. And we will close out today's show. We got some NFL news that we mentioned off the top. The Cardinals, they did end up releasing star wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins in a shocking fashion because what this tells me, they couldn't really get a draft pick for him. They are actually eating 21 point, I believe, $22.6 million in dead cap 
to cut DeAndre Hopkins. It is going to be a pre-June 1st designation. But D-Hop, he's still one of the more productive wide receivers in the NFL. I mean, just this past year, he did put up 700 yards, but he only played in nine games. He still had 11.2 yards per catch. But again, it's those years in 2020 that you really saw the DeAndre Hopkins talent emerge, and you saw how he is really one of the better wide receivers in the NFL. And could you imagine pairing him up with Jefferson, Addison, and D-Hop? Have those be your top three wide receivers? Those would be the best in the league. I mean, no doubt about it. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you guys made it to the end, just give me a skull down in the comments section. I love seeing who the real ones are. And as always, we'll see you guys next time. Skull Vikes.